if you want to stay in the same situation, then continue doing what you're doing. And you guys can get on board and go down this four lane highway and just rock it out and you don't have to have a decade of learning process. Meet people where they are. If you want to have all types of clients, be a Rubik's Cube. Meet them where they want to be met. We have to know our numbers. We have to know how much we want, and then what, how many deals do I have to close to make that a reality? What I want to do over the next half hour or so is give you clarity on the items that really are going to generate money for you and allow you to do the things you want to do. So if you're not currently being coached by the people in the industry that are doing it at the highest level, then you're working too hard to get there. This is the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast with Kenneth Travis and Sean Zamanoff. Hello everybody, Kenneth Travis here with Next Level Loan Officers and my main man, Shane Kidwell and partner. Hey Shane, how are you? What's up brother? Oh man, another day in paradise, baby. Keeping it real, keeping it real. And uh, today guys, we have uh, not only a friend, but my coach, one of my mentors, um, one of the men that has uh, been a huge impact on my life uh, over the past year and a half, Satima Nolig. What's up my man? KT, Kidwell, great to be with you guys. I'm honored to be with you, brothers, and I'm really looking forward to the podcast today. Awesome. So, uh, so Shane, you and I were talking uh, kind of pregame to this, uh, to this uh, recording and, uh, or this podcast, and uh, one of the things that you and I have talked about is, man, you and I are really good at like strategy in the mortgage business. Like We're really good at being able to help people um, you know, scale their business. We're really good at being able to help people measure their hourly worth, what, you know, and, and to stay focused on the money making activities and scale their business to break threshold and to, and to have all the success in the world that they want so long as they do the work. But one of the things that uh, we often um, are challenged with, with loan officers is it's like, it's like everyone says what they want to do, and then they have a hard time actually doing it, like actually doing the work and getting in and kind of, you know, into the trenches and shoveling and, and doing the things that are necessary. So, so we start talking about these stories that, that a lot of loan officers create in their business. Uh, why don't you share with us, you know, from your perspective, um, what that means to you and, uh, and some of the things that you see with the loan officers that we talk to on a regular basis. Yeah. And first I'm, man, I'm excited to be on with Satema because like, in our business, and we talked about this, and, and like it's the things you don't know you don't know that are going to come back and bite you. And in my career, um, in my growth, the, the area where I always lacked the most was that mental toughness. I, I, had a, I carried a lot of insecurity from my childhood. And like we, we never become adults in some areas. We just carry what we learn. We just carry it into our adulthood, and we just become an adult with the childhood mentality. And so for me, like Satema and, and, and just like the time we had together, man, that was like, like, I think I can say this on the air. He like, he like bitch slapped me like mentally into like shifting my trajectory and my thought process. And so as we were getting ready for this KT, like I was really thinking about how in the mortgage business, the things that hold us back the most, it's not the blocking and tackling. It's not importing apps, running credit. It's truthfully it's rarely, if ever, your company. That's the story we like to use to say, well, I didn't succeed last year because my company, when in reality, it's the space between our ears. It's the, you know, did you get up and work your tail off? Did you, get, did you leave it all on the field? You know, probably not. You know, and are you, and these stories are so powerful because what we do, and I did this for a long time in my career, is I built perceptions and narratives in my head of how people perceive me. So I think Kenneth perceives me in such a way that I'm not a good performer, I'm not smart, I'm not, whatever that may be. I react and I shape my reality based on the story that's neither confirmed nor denied. And the, 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 the crazy thing about it is that story is never right. Like it might be like somewhat right. There might be some truth to it. Like maybe you aren't working hard enough. Maybe you aren't doing the things you say you're going to do, but reacting to a false reality never wins. And it's not a winning mindset. And I think the thing in next level that we've really focused on over the last 12 months is building that tough mental game. And man, if you listen to stories, your mental game is weak. Like it's weak. Tim, what do you think, man? Come on, baby. I know you just <laughs> all right, well, you just ruined so just, <laughs> it's like light the dynamite. Here we go. Yeah, I, you know. I love the conversation. I love yeah. it. You know, yeah. you said some things here, and 
something that like we all conversate about is this conversation of stories. And you know, I, I heard this phrase long ago, and we've incorporated it into what we call it conscious of creation. With the story we believe the most about ourselves is the story we tell the most about ourselves. And the problem with that is that most people today, they've got this, as you call it, Shane, this false story. And I'm going to substitute a different word for false. I'm going to use the word made up. Right? It's all made up. Everything today that we believe, that we say, is all, it's made up. It's created. And most people, they they have a default creation mechanism, right? This default. So they wake up and the default mechanism is, I'm not good enough. I'm not competent enough. What would they think of me? Oh my gosh, I don't measure up to them. Look at their highlight reel on, on social media compared to my weaknesses. When will I ever get there? I'm not, and, it, and they, this, this loops, it just repeats over and over and over. And then we look for evidence to, to make it true. And one of the other truths is, that our behaviors always align with what we believe to be true. And this is a perfect storm for like misery and failure, as well as for happiness and success. Because on one side, the people who create a very weak, non-powerful, unworkable narrative or story, again, I'm not good enough, I don't belong, what if I fail, what if I run out of money, the, the market, my company, that victim story, it leads them down to the docks of hell. On the other side, you get guys like you guys, right? like powerful dudes, powerful leaders who create not, they don't let the default story take over. They create a new story every single day, oftentimes multiple times a day that combats and battles the old story or the default story. And again, the story we tell the most is the story we believe and the story we believe is the story we tell the most as well as our behaviors align with what we believe to be true. And most people today, they don't have a strong self-concept, self-esteem, but the powerful people who actually succeed, who actually achieve, like they, they, create, they create new stories every day. And, and I've felt the same way as you, Shane. I, I grew up being yelled at and just, you know, low self-esteem and felt a lot of inadequacies. And I, even today, the time we're doing this, those still creep in and I have to feel that I created a new story. I think that one of the things that's so powerful about what you just said, and I just was thinking about this, is, is, is we focus on the fact that there's this negative like, story that we've created. But the other side that you mentioned, you can create a positive story and it has equal, if not more, power over your life. So if you, and that's, the, that's the exciting part. Like anybody can be successful if they simply switch in their brain looking from negative to positive. Create a positive story, even if you're not there yet, you will become what you create in your mind, good or bad, not just bad. And I think that's what's really exciting to hear is like the, it's the reminder that, dude, just create a new story. You are powerful. You are successful. You are a good man. You are a good husband. And pretty soon you start walking with a little swag. And in sales, if you don't have the swag, you don't have the sale. Amen. Amen. And I'll add something to that. I, I believe. And in my experience, it has been that people who don't tell the truth, like they're unwilling to, to be real about the current reality, it's very difficult to tell and create a new story because they, don't, they haven't acknowledged what they've been doing. This is why football uh, teams, like they watch film and athletes, they watch film and actors, they watch, they watch themselves and they, they critique themselves and they have other people critique themselves so they can see this is how I've been behaving. This is who I've been being. And the truth is, is I have been a victim and I have been miserable and I have been choosing negative. You just got to acknowledge what you've been doing and then you can pivot. And now that you are aware, you can actually start to tell a different story. And, you know, especially with the new year and, and, and new beginnings and resolutions and goals and things that people do at this time of year, the rituals, like, I, I, people really, they got to just look at what you've been doing and just say, does this work or not? Is this leading me to the life I want or not? And then before that, or along with that, you got to start to tell the truth. Like, just be real. Be real about where you are and about what's going on so you can actually do something different. Yeah. So, uh, so September, like this was, uh, this, this speaks to me, right? Because I think a lot of times, man, you hit the nail on the head. People just don't tell the truth about where they really are 
in their business, in their life, in their spirituality, and all the in, in, in the other four pillars of their um, of their realm. And so, like, like Shane, we got to give some truths here, man. You know, we got to like we got to help people really see this because like a lot of people don't want to admit um, <clears throat> like the reality, right? Like, yes, I don't have any money in the bank. I have a terrible relationship with my spouse. I'm not closing any loans really because I'm not going out and doing the work. I'm not meeting with these real estate agents. I'm not doing what's required of me. What else we got, Shane? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to relate this to a loan officer's, you know, daily grind because like, I can tell you, man, like when people, September, when you say tell the truth, I think that's the hardest thing for people to do. Right. And they just don't want, because, and the reason for it is because they're embarrassed. They're afraid of what people are going to think about them. They're, um, you know, they've already painted a picture. And if they paint another picture or tell the truth, it's going to, you know, it's going to expose who they really are. And I think people are more afraid of exposing themselves for who they really are so they can fix it and move forward than just, you know, to your point, tell the truth. You know, and Ken, like, I think in our business, like more than many, and maybe this is a sales thing in general, it's all about those numbers, right? And so, like, you notice in our business, everybody rounds up. They never round down. Or they take the one month out of the year where they yeah, they, they, they take that. They take the, exactly. The mean, not the average, and that becomes the average. Yeah. And, like, honestly, I, I think that's because we, and this kind of goes back to, a, like, a, a whole nother top, topic on spirituality and things, but, like, I tell some of my people that, that struggle with that self-worth. I say, brother, sister, when you walk through our door in our office, I have a little tank that you can't see above the door. It's called the self-worth tank. It fills you up every day when you come in, and it fills you up every day when you go out. You are inherently 100% worthy every day you work here. What happens is we think we aren't worthy, so we sit next to a guy and we posture. And we go, yeah, I did about one and a half million a month. <clears throat> I did that one month. I actually do 900,000. Like we don't like, again, because we feel like our self-worth in the mortgage industry comes from that ego fill those numbers. And like a guy said to me the other day, and I love this. He goes, man, you don't really know like what's going on in KT's world. KT says I do 2 million a month. I, I'd be like, well, I do 1 million. KT's better. What if KT's bills are double my bills? What if KT's struggles are double my struggles? Or like, we never know. So like the idea of comparing and, and creating this self-worth based on other people is such a, a, a limiting factor in sales because now if you're off your game, you're not gonna be making those calls from a powerful place. You're not gonna be having those meetings from a powerful place. You're gonna have it from a place of insecurity and you don't win in a place of insecurity. And that goes back to Satema's point about the truth. Like it was, I thought it was cool about all three of us. I was a fireman. Ken was a Marine. Satema was a professional athlete. 90% of what we all did in that job was preparing for the job. Maybe more than 90%. Like I fought one fire a month. I trained 24 seven to fight a fire. Satema trained 24 seven to play a game and then played 60 minutes once a week. Right. And so it's like, we don't like, if you're not telling the truth, you're not going to be preparing the way you should prepare because you're like, I'm thin and I'm sexy when in reality, you're not thin, you don't have a six pack. If you could just be honest about yourself and say, in my business, in the mortgage business, do you have a six pack? If you don't, you need to work harder. You need to train more. But if you don't speak truth, you're never gonna have the training that's reflective of where you really are. Oh, Shane, I speak to that. Thank you, it's spot on. So uh, we've been talking about truth and I, I think there's going to be a lot of loan officers and, and we hear tell the truth, but how do you actually tell the truth and what is the truth? And there's a definition that I heard that really resonates that I share as part of our curriculum and what we do, which is uh, the truth is a knowledge of things as they really are. It's things as they really are or things as they really were or things as they are to come. And if people can just, you know, another simple way, it's just what is, what's reality. So we talk about the loan officers like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing way better. The worst thing they can do is lie and not say what really is. They posture, they pretend they, that they, they make it look better than it really is. I'm like, look, if you're fat, you're fat. You just say it. And there's, we don't, I don't make a story about being fat for other people. I can for myself, but I'm not going to make it for other people. And so being fat in the mortgage industry, it's like, hey, you're not doing the work. 
You're making up stories that cause you to surf social media and to sharpen your pencils and to buy sticky notes and to go do your laundry when it's work time. Well, I need to read more books. And, and the truth is, if you really want to change it, if you really want to produce more, if you really want to produce more, to have more money, to go be able to put your kids in private school or travel down to the, the Bahamas or whatever it is, it starts with saying, what is my current reality? Like what's real? And this time of year, I tell people, look, look, look back at 2018. Like look back at the previous year, look at the previous month and just say, am I happy? Like, was, is this really what I want? Is this really the life that I am proud of and I'm happy? If I was dying today, is this, am I ready to go? Am I ready to meet my maker? And if you're not, like, no need for guilt, no need for shame. Just come back to reality and say, okay, this is what is now. What is it that I want from here? What will I change from here where I'm at? What's going to be different? And, and don't, you don't have to go do a thousand things. Like powerful people, they, they, they pick one or two things and they move that sucker for a mile versus 10 things for like a, a millimeter. And that's one of the biggest ways to start. The truth is, that's what is, right? What's your production? Like, what's your mindset? How do you see yourself? How do you see the world? How do you see adversity and challenges? Are you mentally tough enough to get up when you don't feel like it? And I, I, one more thing in the mortgage and, and real estate in that world is, look, you're not going to feel like it. Like, I think KT and Kid, well, you guys can be like, you're not going to feel like it most of the time. People watch my Instagram and I hit the gym or I'm an early guy. Um, in the holidays, I was a late guy, but I'm an early guy. I'm like a f wake up at 425. I'm at the gym by 455. And most days, I'd say 90% of the time, guys, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like squatting. I don't feel like running. I don't feel like eating eggs and avocados. I want to eat pancakes and blueberries and French toast with powdered sugar. I don't feel like doing the work. And most people, guess what? You're not going to feel like it. So if you're waiting to feel like it, if you're waiting to like, well, when I feel swag, then I'll do it. No, no, you don't feel the confidence. You move into confidence. You choose the confidence. You do the things that bring you confidence and then certainty. Like you act your way into power. You don't wait to feel like it. And that's just something I wanted to share because I know that's uh, like it's very common with people who you've got to go hustle. You've got to go hunt. But I don't feel like I Look, I don't feel like it most of the times. But I've just learned to do the work regardless. So what you're basically saying is you're not perfect. <laughs> what, you like progress. I'm like one percent perfect, man. Right. <laughs> but you make a lot of progress. I, I I would have to say that. So uh, so what I'm hearing from you know from all of us really is you know like don't posture. Um, you know share our struggles, like the realities that we that we face on a daily basis. Tell the truth, which is our current reality. Uh, having a conscious self creation, um, a strong one about ourselves, and then knowing what you want and what to do and how you're going to get there and just pick a few things to really focus on to push forward. And, uh, yeah. And so like for, for, for me and, and Shane, I know September, like, you know, just hanging out with you and, and you helping us uh, over the, you know, you, you've helped us a lot. like get clarity on things that we want and to have, you know, powerful conversations with ourselves on things that we want, why it's important to us. Um, uh, and it's been, it's been, it's been transformational for me at least. Right. And, uh, just living in that way and, uh, yeah. And just like going after what you say you want and, and doing all those things. By the way, I've got my uh, first CrossFit competition coming up on the 12th of January. Yeah, buddy. Man, just say, yeah. yeah. And I am a Marine. I am KT and I am <laughs> a Marine it. doing CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, can, can I add something to that man real quick? Like I, I think that what the, the problem for a lot of people hearing this call is like they're going at it alone. And man, like whether it's working out, being a Marine or being a fireman, we had a rule called two in, two out. You never went into a fire by yourself. And if you went in, you went in with a partner and there were always two guys sitting outside waiting to help pick you up if something went wrong. And I think that's one of the things that at next level and Satema will preach about this often, man, don't go alone. Like, like, cause like to September's point, man, I don't want to get up 90% of the time. My, I got back problems every morning I wake up. I feel like I'm 90, but if I know I got a dude who's waiting for me at the gym and I've seen September post, he's like, he's got his gym crew, right? 
Like, he's got a bunch of Samoan dudes. They look like they carry tree trunks at this gym. I don't know where he works out, but, like, <laughs> you don't see normal people at this gym. But, man, don't go it alone. Like, you know, you got to have people, like, next levels got started out of a bunch of friendships and, and really, like, us wanting to have accountability and friendship and speaking into each other's blind spots. And if you don't have that, I think all of these things we talked about are significantly harder to overcome. Yeah, I will add to that, Shane. So we've talked about this thing called conscious self-creation where, where we've, we, you create yourself. So there's another creation and I call it conscious association creation. And you guys have said you have mentored me, but you look, you guys are mentors and coaches to me too. I, I, I have no problem saying that. I look at the way you guys run your lives, the way you run your businesses, how committed you guys are. And Shane, you said like, don't go it alone. I will just double down on that. The problem with most people is they, they think they are alone, that no one, like they're the only ones who face these problems. And they think, well, I'm the only one. No, if you come to, to a next level event, and you surround yourself with greatness, you rise so high ab above the smut and the garbage of the world, you cannot help but become more powerful as you, number one, you create yourself through your own language, and number two, you create yourself by associating with other people. I learned this from one of my mentors who said, Satema, probably the most significant thing that's gonna influence your life. And I'm like, listening, like, what is it? He's like, is who you spend your time with. And I, I took a step back. I'm like, well, I read. And he's like, but who you spend time with, like they're, you're gonna, they're gonna influence you and you're gonna influence them. And if you're hanging out with these people, right, on a daily virtual basis, a quarterly masterminds, like coming to next level events, being around you guys, you cannot help but get better. Like I, I wanna be healthier. Like I was looking up half marathons today because I'm like, that's my, that's my season. Like I'm gonna go do a half marathon. KT's doing his uh, his CrossFit competition. And when you hang out with other people, like, like you can't help. Like, I, I, we t I start to talk like KT. Like, you can hear it now. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Like, I, I, man. But it's because I spend time in KT. And when I, when I spent time with you, Shane, up in Seattle, and your people, like, I couldn't help but be happier. So there's conscious self-creation, and then there's conscious association creation. And look, you got to go be with people. You go be around winners. Surround yourselves. And you guys, that's why I love being on this with you guys. I love knowing you guys. And if there's someone listening to this that's like not part of next stuff, I'm like, I'm just going to plug it. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, I have made more money whenever I surround myself with people. I become happier when I surround myself. And like, you got to consciously go do this. It's like, people are like, well, where do you find these people to hang out with? I'm like, it's easy. Like, you set the intention and then you write checks to go pay mentors and masterminds. And I travel to different cities to be in masterminds. People come to my masterminds. I get in and listen to podcasts. So I get passionate about this because if I was a loan guy again, and I was, I was a loan guy for four years, a mortgage guy, there's no doubt. I would be like, hey, look, KT, Kidwell, bring me into your fold. Bring me into your people. I want to learn from you guys. You guys run successful businesses. You have successful families. You're healthy. You're, you're grizzly bears. And so I just want to add that, like, don't do it alone. Like, there's no need to. There's no need to, to be a rugged individualist. Have mentors. Have coaches. Have people who you can surround yourself with. And that's why I love what Next Level is all about. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. So tell me, you know, I'm a firm believer, man. You got to write small checks to cash big checks. And uh, I've been coaching for 15 years. And I'm still being coached. Uh, you being one of them. And uh, yeah, so I'm thankful. I'm thankful uh, for all that you do. Um, so one of the things that uh, for you guys that are listening is like, you know, Satima, uh, I know you have man wealth and immersion. It's kind of a, a special program to Shane and I, uh, we went through it with you. Um, uh, a little over a year ago. Probably. I heard I heard it was the best one he ever did, KT. Yes, I just, that's I, what I heard. I heard. Yeah. 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 You know, and I think about the time that you really pushed us mentally and physically, and it hurt, right? And it was, and it like was eye opening. And uh, it was when we were sitting in that circle as a group, and we were holding those 40 pound sandbags over our head. And there were 19 men that had to hold those sandbags over their head until they couldn't hold them anymore. And the last two, men standing were Shane and I 
And the only reason that he was able to hold on because he's got metal plates in his back and he was able to lock it on. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was, I was waiting for the KT punchline. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I just remember that, man. I just remember how impactful that was for me. And, uh, and you know, and, and, and to your point, man, you know, Shane and I and, and Next Level, we don't have our scarcity mentality. And, like, I do believe that people should plug into coaching in some way, shape, or form. And you're probably one of the best mindset coaches uh, that I know and that somebody could really benefit from. So if somebody was uh, to reach out to you and to really plug into to a program, uh, because I know you've got several, like what would be like what would that look like? What would the process be for that? Go to my site, setemangali.com, S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com, and just look at the different programs. And if you see the one that resonates, right, you, you, most of them are going to require you to opt in, put your email in, right, get on my list so I can hit you with emails and show you and share with you more information. And there's going to be videos. And you watch the videos. And if it resonates, look, it, like not just with me, but with anyone, if, if something resonates, do it. Like, listen. And it's never going to be comfortable. It's never going to be perfect. But if you're telling the truth, like that's the process, right? You, you, you hear something, you do it. So go to my site, setemangali.com. We've got Man Wealth, we've got Shield Man, we've got The Huddle, uh, we've got Pro Rev Live, and just a, a lot of great things. But that's the way. And you, you can connect with me on Instagram, connect with me on Facebook. And my mission is to help right, 100 million people, is like, to help husbands and wives and, and business owners and entrepreneurs. And I'm speaking to uh, an all American group of football players today, later on uh, here in Long Beach. And I'm excited. I'm excited to go right touch their heart and move them. And this morning, crazy piece of quick note, I walk out of the gym about 6.30. And this older lady, she walks right up next to me. And I'm, I'm like dripping and steam's coming off my head. She's like, I just have to tell you, the speech you gave us four years ago at the elementary, I still remember it. And I'm like, I, I had like five minutes. She's like, so impactful. Thank you so much. That was, that was four years ago for five minutes to elementary kids. And like it, it moved, like I got in my car and I, I started to, to kind of tear up. I was like, thank you, God. I, like I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that I made a difference for a mama four years ago who was part of the PTA at the school. So I love what I do for work. And I'm so honored to be a part of what you guys are doing at Next Level and just to be associated with you guys. So thank you, KT. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Um, so in closing, Shane, did you have anything you wanted to, you wanted to add in closing there? And I just think that like, like you can the you can always be in conversation with high thinking people like you can always do it like you can get on a podcast like ours for free like if you can't afford coaching sign up for a podcast it's free virtual coaching like there's always a way you can get in the conversation and if you think there isn't just reach out to us because we're creative dudes that love helping people and like that is our ultimate goal like we all have very, like we're blessed to be extremely successful in our business. We're all in the trenches doing it. And so this, like what, what we built with Next Level was an opportunity to stay in conversation with like-minded people who might just be a, a little farther down the path than some other people. And that's how I got to the position I'm in. I mean, it's been some of my most amazing like transitions in business have happened in these last couple of years. So I just want to encourage everybody, like it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing in your business, whether you're doing, whether you're kicking ass or you're, you're sucking wind, get in the conversation. There's no excuse not to get in the conversation. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more Shane. And uh, guys, it's a mortgage community of like-minded people. And to Shane's point, it doesn't matter if you're on chapter two or chapter 22, we're all, no one's better than anyone. We're just further down the river. So with that said, if you are a loan officer, branch manager, whoever in this mortgage business and you're looking to get into that conversation, feel free, like write this down. Matter of fact, you can do it right now. And that's simply to text the word next level to 36260. Text the word next level to two, uh, 36260 and you can uh, get our app. It's a free app. has a lot of links and downloads and places you can go to really find out more about what we do and the programs that we offer as well. So Tema, you are the man. Super Bowl champion. Brothers. Love you, brother. I'm honored. Super Thank champion. you. All right, man. Offer coach, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. Love you. And uh, I appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Thanks, my brothers. Man.